Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video I'll be discussing the DUP's attempts to seek a judicial review into the legality of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Um, what they seem to be basing their legal challenge on and how, whether or not they've got a case, I don't think they're going to be getting what they think they'll be getting. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news in politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Uh, so for those who may not be completely up on this, what is the Northern Ireland Protocol and who are the DUP? So the Northern Ireland Protocol is an admittedly clumsy set of measures designed to ensure that the border inside Ireland remains invisible in line with the Good Friday Agreement and in the interests of peace in Ireland. But because the UK exited the EU's customs area, well, there has to be a customs border somewhere. So Boris Johnson put it inside the UK between Britain and Northern Ireland. Now that means checks on some goods passing from one part of the UK to another and the paperwork to go with it. Now the DUP are a party of extreme right wing nutters who saw Brexit as their opportunity to create a split between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. What they got was arguably the opposite. Now it's more likely actually that Northern Ireland will diverge from Britain and naturally align itself more quickly with the Republic of Ireland. Supply chains of goods are likely to rejig over the next few years if something isn't done. So now the DUP want to put a stop to this with all haste, so they're seeking to challenge the legality of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Their grounds are, and I quote, fundamental to the act of union is unfettered trade throughout the UK and the core of the Belfast Agreement was the principle of consent Yet the Northern Ireland Protocol has driven a coach and horses through both the Act of Union and the Belfast Agreement. The Belfast Agreement being the more formal description of what we generally and certainly I generally call the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, but I'll come to that later. First, what are they on about with the Act of Union? Well, obviously this refers to the Union with Ireland Act 1800. It does indeed have a section on trade, which I'll also quote, so we're as clear as we can be about a passage that well, I'm not necessarily that clear about. Do you know what? I'm not a legal expert. I'm not a constitutional expert. I'm a political commentator at best. And it goes, the subjects of Great Britain and Ireland shall be on the same footing in respect of trade and navigation. And in all treaties with foreign powers, the subjects of Ireland shall have the same privileges as British subjects. From 1st of January, 1801, all prohibitions and bounties on the export of articles, the produce or manufacture of either country to the other shall cease. This is inevitably what they're touching on here. Uh, and I'm quoting from the live version of the Act on the government's legislation website. And do you know what? There's not a lot of it. Uh, that being said, there is a note at the top saying that there may be changes and effects to the legislation related to exiting the EU not yet recorded. So there's absolutely nothing clinching in reading that act, even if you were a legal or constitutional expert. Then there is a little bit in the act as well that talks about internal duties. Now I'm not sure if that's a qualifier that allows for the provisions in the Northern Ireland Protocol or not. Like I said, I'm not an expert on these matters, nor have I seen the assessment by an expert. That is what will happen if the judicial review, I mean, basically there'll be a hearing first of all, and then a judge will decide whether or not there's any merit in it. And if there is, it will go towards the judicial review. Um, as for the Northern Ireland Protocol breach in the Good Friday Agreement, I mean, I don't know. See, I confess at the time, I wondered how exiting the customs union with the EU at all could be in compliance with the agreement. But in the two years that this has been discussed, or nearly two years, I have never once seen signs of an impartial expert saying that a customs border up the Irish Sea would contradict the agreement. But everyone has agreed that putting the customs border between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland would. So I just went with it. Uh, besides, the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement was absolutely about cooperation within Ireland at its core. So the DUP are going to seek a judicial review. We're also told that the DUP and their associated nutters like Kate Hoey and Ben Habib are pursuing other legal challenges as well. There's about five legal challenges, I believe. 
but I don't know the details of those yet. So all I can really comment on is the potential clash with the Act of Union here. Now, although, like I said, not an expert, we have been treated to a series of challenges over the past few years that's given us a bit of an insight into how these things can work. Brexit has represented a very serious threat to our constitution, and so I've been following legal constitutional challenges a lot more closely over the past few years than at any other time of my life. Take, for example, the Supreme Court case in 2019. So Boris Johnson's government were charged with unlawfully shutting Parliament down. The prorogation of Parliament was considered unlawful because it wasn't being done with the purpose of preparing for a new session of Parliament, but in stopping Parliament holding the government to account. The court delivered a unanimous verdict that Boris Johnson had indeed had acted unlawfully. But towards the end of the case, the justices were asking barristers about remedies and, and the actual legal experts who were commentating on this were going, oh, this is interesting. The judges now uh, are focusing less on the arguments and more on remedies. This might be an indication that they believe that there is a case here um, because this seems to be how these things work. It's not a case that if this challenge comes before the Supreme Court, which it won't initially, but eventually that's where it would have to end up if there is merit in it, then the judge, it's not like the judges are going to decide, oh yeah, this contradicts, so yeah, the Northern Ireland Protocol has no effect, it's cancelled. Judges can't do that. The Northern Ireland Protocol, the Union with Ireland Act, and the Northern Ireland Act, which is what gives legal force to the Good Friday Agreement in the UK, all three of those acts are acts of Parliament, and only Parliament can amend or repeal them. So without going beyond my very limited expertise here, what would actually happen if the court agreed with the DUP? They would, the judges would then seek to discuss a remedy. That remedy, of course, would have to be put in place by Parliament. You know, I mean, uh, what do the DUP think? Do they think that because two acts contradict that the court could simply state that one of them is no longer in force? What if they decided that the Union with Ireland Act, which is the more distant one, is the easiest to set aside. Then with a simple judgment in a court, Northern Ireland is no longer part of the UK. Well, I mean, that would be ridiculous, of course. But how is it less ridiculous to decide that a different act of parliament should be set aside? Now, all that would actually happen is parliament would be advised that there's something not quite right here and you might need to just modify something. And obviously the change would need to be made to the Union with Ireland Act in all probability to square the circle. Now, I don't know what complications there would be with that regarding Stormont, because the DUP hold a fair amount of power there. But as I say, I mean, this may already have happened. There may already have been a change, because remember, and I've put a link below if you want to see it yourself, there is that note on the digital version of the legislation which says that not all changes pertaining to the EU have been recorded, or exiting the EU have been recorded. Now, in terms of the politics, what I think has happened here is that the DUP were caught out by the issues with Brexit, which they supported, remember. And, and you might think, how have they been caught out? Because we've seen all this coming from a long way away. You have to bear in mind, once, once you understand that the DUP are not grounded in reality, as soon as you're not grounded in reality, there's an awful lot of obvious things can catch you out. But anyway, granted, they never actually supported the Northern Ireland Protocol, but that was the inevitable result of their campaign. They thought, they thought that Brexit could lead to a hard border inside Ireland. They actually thought that we could end up leaving without a deal that at least preserved the Good Friday Agreement. No parliament would have allowed that. Not even the current one, which is as hard a Brexit parliament as you can imagine. Certainly the one that existed before the 2019 general election was never going to allow that. But again, they're not grounded in reality. So basically what I think is they're panicked. You know, the political reality is now unfolding and they just don't know what to do. You have to bear in mind, for all the people that will inevitably in the comments go, oh, reunification, I mean, that doesn't solve this problem. Uh, but the other thing is people behave as if, you know, Northern Ireland wants to be reunified again. It's very split, very, very split. Uh, if anything, it's still a majority not in favour of that. 
and the DUP are the representative. Now, I'm not suggesting that the unionists in Northern Ireland all identify with the DUP. I would like to think not even a majority do. But at the end of the day, they're the ones who hold the unionist power in Northern Ireland. So they, they represent a, a substantial amount of the com community of Northern Ireland that are not at all happy with what's happening here. Not at all. And understandably, even, you know, take the politics out, even from a business point of view, this is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. So they, they don't know what to do. They know they need to represent that particular view. The legal challenge won't get them what they want if what they want is a judge to say, yeah, the Northern Ireland Protocol is illegal. You need to get rid of it because that's, that's not going to happen. And I suspect they know this. This is probably why there is talk about, about five separate legal challenges, all just random lashing out to see if anything will stick as far as I can see. Possibly the intention is to ramp up pressure on the UK government and the EU to smooth over the arrangements, ease things up, because again, the DUP will be looking very bad at the moment. Possibly it's just to make them look like they're doing something until they can decide what they actually can do. Uh, what it won't be is the contradiction between acts of parliament but th th they are saying it is, because if it were, they would have sought this judicial review a year ago. Like I said, th this act is very short. And if you were a legal expert, you'd understand it much better than I do. It's very, very short. Why didn't they call this judicial review a year ago or over a year ago? Why did they wait until it had all come into force? Now, I think this is a panic move. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.